All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. Awaken to the Eternal, Kevin Meredith here. I'm going to revisit what it is to make contact versus what it is to break contact and everything in between because I've been thinking about this and the trajectory that the spirit has me on, as with a lot of real ones, going through this is how can we better become inwardly responsive to the calling in our lives versus that of constantly being distracted by the program to remain outwardly or externally reactionary to this whole thing. And so, you know, I just talked about the walking, talking programs that the, the, the satanic ritual abuse has had in forming the linear patterning to everyday society, especially when you are awakened and God gives you the eyes to see that what's going on on the surface is very cut and dry to the enemy. It's very, um, it's about turning people into batteries. That's it. It's about turning them into robots. And so that's why the hybrid program is the everything in between the two bloodlines. And so one is dominant towards the externalization of being reactionary and the other the human essence of the one aiming towards human completion or fulfillment the spirit would always have us to work and process things inwardly as if to mature to become responsive to to the sanctification process to be able to listen to the ever still small voice that the most high speaks to us individually you know, in, in showing his love for the individual human being but beyond that the ones that he has written in the one that the ones that he has chosen from the inception of this thing you know generation to generation but when it's time to enter that individual spiritual battle for the life of humanity do you find yourself on the outs? You found, do you find yourself alone in this thing? And God is, is, is desiring to do the greater work for you. It's already been done. And this is why you get to this place of free will, but then you realize, in a way it's relinqu relinquished because the Most High has already done it for us. And so from there, it's like Neo says, the choice. Agent Smith is asking, why are you doing what you're doing? But it's not anything, it doesn't have anything to do with behavior. It's actually the choice of, of the light of Christ that gives us the free will to be, you know. And then, what are you going to make of it? Are you going to take that leap of faith and pursue the inward response? Are you going to live to answer the calling? And so, understandably, with that, we are in the flesh accord still in this examination. So there are things that we have to be tested by. There are questions that we have to answer. There are presuppositions that um, we have to examine ourselves, especially like when Kierkegaard talks about the stages. If you desire to allow yourself to be examined by it to fulfill the, you know, what it is to be a complete human being, it will be done by being led by the Spirit of the Most High and not so much your own leaning or own understanding. And a lot of us, yes, we do fail at that when we try to attempt the relief effort, but we understand that God has already done it when we seek to apply our own free will. And so I freely just give it back to God. That's the, that's the beauty of standing righteous unto His glory is that, wait, society, the external type, has really has no free will. They're already programs on top of programs, um, fixed or stuck to the linear patterning of this satanic ritual abuse, whether knowing or unknowing. And so our job is to live out the choice. And if, see, they want you to do something either with it or they want you to return back to a workspace legalism. And so 
we have the and, and you might it's not just about the relationship you're having personally in real time with other people it could be the same trauma bond or soul attachment or soul tie that you're working out within yourself the old nature the constant friction to seek the Lord so that you can be refined to a greater degree and, and your witness can be amplified so that you can be the a, a, a more of the spirit of being the witness of the Most High, allowing the Holy Spirit to draw you closer to His Son. Hamashiach Yehawashai, who the world knows is Jesus Christ. And so, that's the fight, that's the inner war going on. We have to, we have to apply the inner work so that we don't get caught up by, you know, do I make the, do I make contact? Have I settled because of my experiences told me that I, I've gone through a life process of rejection? Or am I too, on the other end, am I too accepting of others? Have I not sought the, the, God, the godly standard so that I can apply the, the, the spiritual discernment uh, in spirit and truth so that I'm not looking to blame the defensive mechanisms, the boundaries, the the walls that have been set up by someone else, a vessel who lives by externals, who exists as a shell of oneself, who who has a limit because of the physicality, you know. And so I've been thinking about this, and this is like one of the, 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 the questions that had hit, has hit me the most in the past week and a half, two weeks, is understanding that weight. These walking, talking programs, they're defending the externalizations, the shells of who they are. And so when they answer you back, it's, it doesn't always resonate. And you don't want that to become a trauma bond to your own issues that you're trying to uh, work through within as well. And so you have to disattach, you have to disassociate from the externalization all the way around so that you can work on the inner man or inner woman to aim towards the true self of being able to respond more so than react. And so you, when you, when you enter the bigger picture, when you're sanctified deeper into the calling, you understand first it's not what you can do or what you will do, it's what's been done for you. And it's, it's what are you willing to do to be more amplified, to allow God to spiritually mature you to a, 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 a much more of a spirit being, allowing your inner man or inner woman to flourish as 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 you know in spirit and truth according to the, the the leading of the holy spirit to draw you closer to the sun and so this is the thing is i've noticed a lot of relationships for myself in the past have been you know kevin why are you contending with a an external value system of somebody else that is not about giving or compromising to the inward flow of the holy spirit in in, in, in your life why is it you doing the, the projected false inside out work to try to please somebody, try to live up to a standard that, that has frankly been set forth by the program of that individual or the various altars or programs to keep that individual as rote and not as fluid in the Holy Spirit, not as empowered. And see, that's the friction is every day outside of us and within us. It's there's two types of relationships happening at all times. First, it's our it's our own uh, of the old nature accord that we're always contending and, and striving against. But our hope is not to have our eyes set on those things. It's to be magnified so that that place of ego, that place of false self will diminish. And so that we can truly exhibit an inside out existence that is eternal. That is that is not like hiding your light under a bushel, but it's like putting it on top of the on top of the lampstand or the bushel, if you will. And so that's first. Second of all, you don't want to be taking on anyone else's trauma uh, patterning, their bonds, their ties, and, and, and make them yours because then you're dealing with two sets of circumstances and that's the ploy right there is to get you to feed into that. And where are they now? If you're a real one, you know, just like I ask you, I ask myself, you know, where are, where are they now? You know, programs on top of programs. They're not in your life anymore. And so that's, it's not a bad thing though. It's it's an educational thing. It's it's a, it's a thing where you, you have to learn by trial and error. This is a, this is the refiner's fire to get you in right standing to a standard that has been gifted to you. It's a privilege to 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 uh, carry your cross. And so this leads me to the next thing is the difference between being suckered into a workspace legalism 
for existence more so than becoming an eternal spirit, you know, in the flow of the Holy Spirit, of having no beginning and no end, and then looking with the bigger picture at not only your own vessel, but at the relationships you're having with those around you, personally speaking. Um, don't let yourself be trapped by this life of trauma. You know, that's the thing is I've been suckered into someone else's experiences and patterning for the traumas that they have. Because that's when you're a real one, it's being that empathic type. You want to step into someone else's shoes. You want to help them. But you can't let it become a crutch to setting up false boundaries and standards that are, that are man-made in and of your own existence. And so you have to check yourself at the door. You have to go inward. You have to have a resurgence when the, when the Spirit is discerning you not to, not to venture forth, but to go once again return within. Return to your first love the light of Christ within you. And so it's, it's the duality of, of the ages, but the consummation of everything just condensing, the war going on. And so we're, we're even more separated now than ever. But it's not the loneliest process. It's more of the, the, the fulfillment of the self-discovery of everything that's been prophesied by the Most High who has written us into the book of life. You know, the, Those who, who, who he has deemed spiritually grafted into the Israel of Jacob, okay? And so put on the, the, the bigger picture, but also know that because God has forgiven you, you have to forgive other, others in such a way where you have to be the interceding hope for them, you know? You have to exhort them individually beyond their issues and even beyond your own to get out of your own way. You can't you can't just put a block up for someone. That means you're probably not doing the inner work. And I say that because it's, it's something I say against myself that I fall short of, you know, in my own examination is, okay, I got to go back in and do the work and to, to, to make sure that I'm not projecting uh, any false boundaries, insecurities, um, expectations, uh, um, traumas of my own onto the next person when relating, okay? So these are battles that we all go through. Um, the real ones know this all too well, is it's time to start doing things for yourself. At, not as if to magnify ego, but to complete true self. There's an order to this. You have to, um, you know, be able not only to, to, to carry the cause of free will, but now step forward if you have to. You know, feet hitting the ground in terms of the application of it. And a lot of us, look, we're, they want... And so what does the enemy do, though, with these relationships? If it's a false one, it will be a an Agent Smith type to come in to keep you... If they can't get you to fall in line with their uh, feeding off of you to protect their, their boundaries, they will keep you blaming your own insecurities based on your own false boundaries to keep you in place as well. That's the whole thing. It's the outside-in effect of the psychic attack of, of, of the linear patterning. This, this satanic ritual abuse like the snake eating its own tail but the, but the rote patterning. And you begin to see this when you spiritually discern the type who is out for external self-gratification in terms of protecting one's values, standards, and that's their advocacy, that's a telltale sign, hey, maybe that's not for me. I understand that you have a passion for, say, bringing a voice to such and such causes or, you know, I'm not going to name any, I don't want to make it personal, but take this personally impersonal that you know what I'm talking about. You have to, it's not about the external values that you put on your own boundaries. It's about getting into the flow state in terms of having a relationship with the Most High where you're answering His calling, He's taking the lead, you're following, you know, and then you look to humanity in the same measure. You have, you intercede with the hope for them, you know. You endure with the patience of the suffering of the saints, you know, with the same testimony made to life. And that's why when you intercede with the bigger picture for someone, you pray for them, you fellowship with them, you encourage them, but it's not meant to be a make, uh, you know, a make contact deal. That's okay. A lot of us are in that position, you know. And so 
when I see through, as I see through the veil to the other side to connect the dot and, I have, and I'm interceding for someone else, do I have compassion on, on their boundaries and standards to spiritually discern that, look, hey, look, these aren't my own. I can see what's happening here. There is a reoccurrence of trauma, tra traumatic bonding with such and such types that it's not for me, but I, I still want to have compassion to help. But there's a limit for me because I don't want to be kept. I don't want to, I don't want to become a blockage getting in my own way, you know, and, and because I have to keep going forward. You know, I can't let them stop me, but I also can't let them try to re-traumatize me to my own trauma experiences of traumas or attachments that I'm currently and always, you know, a lot of us are trying to work on to break free, you know, to break contact within ourselves so that in God's right standing, we can make contact with those who are equally yoked in the spirit and truth of, of, of the Most High to be able to respond the correct way. And it's hard, I know, it's it's... It's a lot of trial and error that, you know, we can't presuppose about others. Um, we can't hang them on, on their faults when we know better. We, we, when we've taken the higher ground, we have to be all that more forgiving, all that more compassionate, and all that more empathic. Um, but staying in the bigger picture of the Holy Spirit to not let us just look for relief orientation, but look for this, look for... Um, the relationship that is equally yoked that's that that's the destined uh space and time of, of of what god's doing for our lives individually to bring us together where he's in the middle of it you know and so i think about these things though because it's a, it's it's what a lot of ti's are going through it's a lot of if you're a real one uh be careful of other so-called ti's who are coming in and they're 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 they kind of meander in the area of complaining a lot it's the one foot in the world i just want relief i just want this and that i just want the social festivity but then you're seeing that that wait for me myself if you're asking me personally it's just not for me you know the little the dramatic the dramas the social thing of of attracting a crowd of people for the sake of of of, of external relief orientation you know and so I'm, I'm, I'm withdrawn. I, I do want the relationship, but I'm withdrawn because it's not what God would have for me. I want the will of the Most High elaborating on my true self, the inner man, to, to move forth. And, so, and, and then again, the program will send walking, talking programs to try to trap you, set you up, and keep you remaining in the same spot as a hamster on a hamster wheel, you know, and so this is why you see the condition of the so-called TI community in the state that it's in. It's because there's, you can look at it as a total success by the enemy to constantly keep us divided. But if you're in, if you're truly growing, you've turned your isolation into consecration or sanctification then you can see it as a, a success of uh, by the most high. And so a lot of us, you ask me, I'm going to tell you, look, I'm a, I'm a to total failure of a success. You know, God is showing me, look, you're not going to do it on your own. I'm going to do it for you. There's nothing you can do. I'm going to get you to the place where there's nothing you're going to not want to do unless I'm leading you into doing it. You know, and that's, look, I'm, we're, a lot of us have to learn the hard way with this. And... It's the privilege of eternal life. And you may not like it for the temporary short term, but ultimately it's for God receiving the gift of, of Jacob in right standing order to correct us as a father disciplines those that he has chosen out, those that he loves, you know. And so it's not about blaming anymore. It's just not. It's, I don't have, I don't prioritize my energy if people don't want to let me in and they want to hang me on the advocacy that they live for but does not resonate with the direction that the spirit is leading me to in terms of the bigger picture then i'm just going to limit that in the physical and just say nope that's not for me and so that's what i've done if look if you don't and and you can tell there's a they they, they want to gravitate so they can get relief from you but if you do that then you're feeding you're feeding into into them remaining uh, according to their external boundaries and, and you can't do that either you can't you can't
can't intercede falsely for them. And it's a, it's a spiritual thing. that the, It's an act of the Holy Spirit to get both parties to recognize the difference between selfish wants and the overall need of, of human necessity. And so... This is definitely, you know, as it brings to mind, this is a portion of my extended testimony, which, as I just titled it right there, human necessity, you know, it goes along the lines of acquire, you know, acquired love, but not as if to take. It's something that is built upon through your life orientation, your process of trial and error, your process of refinement. It's something that the Lord is not doing to you for, 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 for the cause of no sake. He's doing this for you so that you can be the embodiment of free will and choice. Now they want you to fall back in line to take that choice from you and manipulate it against you energetically. But when you're spiritually discerning, it's better that you turn your isolation into God's purpose sanctification for you to receive and carry on your cross, carry on your your existence eternally in, in, in spirit and truth. And so the enemy can no longer sift through the wheat. You know. And then you'll be better for it. And then you'll look at things you'll need to look you'll look forward and you you know, God is good enough. So it's good with me, you know. And so, it's time that there's enough of the man-made boundaries and trauma bonds and soul ties and all that. That's a projection of the walking, talking programs that come and go to the, to, to the relationships that we go through to, to ultimately feel the negative effects and take the blame for. But it's not our it's not our duty to just go out and when you're hurt by these things, you go out and you blame the other party because it doesn't do anything. It just causes more separation. It's how you learn the lesson. It's how you come back from the mistake, how you get back up from falling down. And it's taken me a while. It's, it does take... When you are someone who... When there's no value put on space and time, especially with like the introvert empathic type like myself it's it's interesting it takes time for the healing but it's like I remember you from yesterday I always have the same it never it, it's something that has to be worked out inwardly but the memory of, of building upon it yes you were very much so a very important part of my life in learning the lesson that I needed to learn to grow to overcome the attachment, the projection from the external to the internal of what I was doing wrong, of who I was being, you know, in, in the wrong place and time. But it's needed as well, turning my wants to needs, needing, knowing that I need the most time more than I want my ego relief fulfilled. No, I want Christ-centeredness. I want regeneration. I want reconciliation to the faith, you know. I want... I desire, you know, and it's not I want, I want, I want. Now it's like, okay, I need to. Then, once again, free will is now redirected by the Mosai. It's his will now. Do I really want free will without the Most High taking the reins? Not really, but it's only used because we see it in scriptures applied in a certain way. But no, ultimately, if God chooses you out, your free will is actually his will for you. Period. You're born to that until you're awakened to take the leap of faith um, and then you understand, wait, this whole thing all along was his doing, relationships included. Make, making contact and breaking contact for reasons unbeknownst to us um, now has, has caught our attention to, under, to, to, to coming to the knowing place that, wait, all this has been done for me. I'm going through the refiner's fire, the process of burning away all that stuff that the kingdom doesn't is not required for us to enter into with and so you have to remember that you are you are part of the bigger picture you are being refined you are being grafted in according to to God's glory not to man's glory not to not to know not to any self vain glory or you know um, 
self-aggrandizement. We struggle with that, yes, but that's an internal thing. And then once again, a lot of this can come back as you know they, the, the attempt of the enemy to come in and use the walking, talking vessel to to persecute you in the name of, of, of social justice or man's judgment. I have the right to judge you because I'm a Christian who puts on the superficiality of perfectionism. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm in right standing with my congregation, so I have the right to do so. I can speak for God because everything is right for the, the crowd that, that God has supplanted for the sake of my um, inner examination. And so, you know, and this is why you have the programming of these individuals. And I, you look into it, and you're seeing something different than they are. So you forgive them because the Father forgives you. They do not know but you intercede for knowing for them and you forgive them and you still love them when they're triggered, when they, you know, although we, you and I have gone through the most trauma ever, the most satan satanic, ritually abused uh, notions of, of, of testing that, that we can't deny, but we only hold together in and of ourselves. We cannot let ourselves be connected traumatically, but we need, this struggle has to be done away with and that's the Lord's doing his miraculous magnificent nature nature to turn it into rejoice or rejoicefulness we must keep moving forward we understand the subconnect of, of where we come from as a group but we need to have faith still that we understand if you are chosen are you are you willing what are you willing to do to live it out are you just going to remain with 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 built up walls and 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 and, and boundaries that are possibly not of the uh, time-tested standard of the Most High in His supernatural placement for you, or are you going to look to maintain uh, a safe, complacent relief orientation? And what that ultimately does, it doesn't serve the Most High, it doesn't give Him glory, but it actually does a very much so a disservice from the calling that you were meant to enter into at the, at the correct space and time of God's will for your life. In fact, fact I don't need to tell you this you know I need to remind myself of, of that very thing that I may project onto others but I don't need to tell you this the real ones know that what the life of rejection is you know and this dude back here this brother over here that this professional he's a professional dog walker by the way he's yapping it up real loud because that's what he does he just they wait around to, to get on their phones and like four dogs I tried to do a podcast this morning but the dog walkers just started parking their, their ritzy looking vehicles and they just they they think you know I mean ultimately you know one one guy's dog really had to take a shit you can't blame the dog you know but the rest of them who knows right and so I digress though you know because you have the power to choose empowerment, to step into it, and not hold it against your fellow man. And this is why I must let go of people who are no longer here that I that I have a heart for still, that I always will. I have to just let it go. I have to be the love that I was called to be. And so it's like, Kevin, what are you willing to do to exist in such a way that you are not only being refined by the refiner's fire, but you are walking alone the narrow the narrow gate that 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 leads into the narrow way the one way that as soon as you think you understand kevin it's not of god you got to check yourself at every measure of this spiritual discernment it's 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 between you and god i cannot judge you for that nor am i inclined what i'm inclined to do is do my part, do what I have to do to know. We all know what we have to do. It's, are you willing to step forth? Are you willing to step forth? Are you willing to take the leap of faith? You know, get off the fence now. Your boundary sitting, you're, you know, you're, you know, you're playing the fence. You're, you're, you have, and then that's unfortunate. I, it's, it's hard. I can't advocate the same way for my inward necessity. Of, 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 of allowing God to elaborate upon my spiritual walk Sorry. the same way I have to let go of how an external type would advocate for his or her advocacy of what they call life the, the to-do list of 
you know, I'm not going to mention that, but we all have that. We all have to work on the externals that may be keeping us back from, instead of, instead of disengaging and, dis, and disattaching from the very behavioral mechanisms that are, that are attempting to, to be thrown at us and reminded us of and keeping us in place. And so we all know that these, you know, and I have the same traumatic boundaries that stem from satanic ritual abuse. I've been in this most of my life. I was born to this. And so I just never understood it until I was awakened, until the impact of it was so great and your eyes are open and it's, it's a shock. But then it's like, okay, all these stages that I spoke about in the natural process, if one were allowed to grow spiritually, you know, aesthetic, ethical, religious, but then you have a, like a fourth stage of, wait, the, the, the light of Christ within you, how does it make sense of the natural process when this thing of, of the targeting program is thrust into your, your life to, to, to attack every apparatus of your vessel from spiritual to physical? How do you go about now applying um, the calling now? How do you do that? And that's personal. It's, it takes the reminders of, uh, of things, of, of knowing that these stages do exist, but also knowing that God is the, Christ is the paradox, as, as, as Kierkegaard says. The world, he's not for the world to understand in all of man's stages and this and that. And it's not that the stages don't exist, according to Kierkegaard, it's that we become the rightful fulfillment of those stages. Like Christ came to fulfill the law, then didn't do away with the law. But when he says something, it's truth, because it's, 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 it's spirit and truth. It's living now. It's the law living within you, written, the word written on your mind, the law written on your mind, the word written on your heart, the law written on your heart and so forth and so on. And so, what comes by way of man is not the same, is not defined the same way by the most high. And that's what, and that's the same for relationships is, we got our relationships, you know, backward instead of inside out, you know. And so, it's not about, it's not even about the other ones when you need to focus on yourself or correcting yourself as the one. It's about having the expectation and hope within to carry on to, 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 to the next step of, of true self. And then there's another brother or sister who comes along to befriend, befriend you, either to be a witness to you or for you to witness to them, to level up in terms of being equally yoked. Um, that God allows for, that he utilizes for the sake of fellowship, that he gets the, the, the glory in his proper order of timing for, for his uh, place and time for your life to move and spiritually grow. You know? And the, the, the thing there is, is us types are far and few between. You know? I don't want to be the type who's, who, who waits too long for boundaries and external reactions that, that, that keep me away from my calling of who I know I'm not here to remain for, but that I know I have to keep on moving in, in the love of spirit and truth. Loving kindness and long suffering. It's hard because people already have set notions about who they think I am. They've already predetermined as a as the programmed intent of externals to their own lives. It's how the only way I can observe it. To let me go before even making contact. Yet at the same time, having a relationship with me before they break contact with me physically. And so the job was done and then they're gone and then I'm left to pick up the pieces and keep it. But that's the thing is, be ready to give an account of, of the word at all times, as scripture says. Be ready of your existence. You don't have to say anything. The Holy Spirit will give you the things to say, as Scripture say. And so, are you are you hearing the ever still small voice of answering that calling, being the one who inwardly responds 
and is waiting upon the direction from the Most High for your life. And it's it's really not even your life. It's it's His life supplanted to the self that's dying daily. The hard, It's hard. It's hard when the attacks are there externally to keep you from that knowledge that sets the captives free. But it's an everyday thing. It's a process orientation that our testimonies are like. The testimony made to eternal life, we resonate the thing, the same thing in spirit and truth continually. It's, it's an ongoing thing. Yet it's not defined as a temporary thing, a fixed concrete nature, because that those of the spirit have no beginning and no end. That's how this kingdom is worked through our very lives, day in, day out. They hate us because our cause is choice, and we it still remains with us. How do we know? Because the light of Christ gives us that choice. It maintains the life of the, the word and the law written, for, or, you know, of what God, you know, in us as, as, as living vessels, as stones crying out, you know. As Baptist John says, he can make he can make sons and daughters of Abraham. That stone's crying out. He can do that, and, he, and it's done. It's been prophesied. It's been written. It would be this way. Oh, Jacob. And so we we under, we, we can't forget the order of what we're grafted into for the for for the proper uh, reception of of. God's glory. And so we know this. We know there's a, a transaction, a, 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 a type of existential communication that is not about what it is we are to do, but about being led by the Spirit to be. And that they hate that. They hate the cause of, of, of the choice that, that has been made for you. Although we call it free will due to our flesh and it's a spiritual thing already been done for us. It's been written that the dragon will come after the remnant seed of the, the woman, the wife of the Most High, in, in John's uh, spirit of revelation. And then the physical, the metaphysical thing came about and the 12 tribes were birthed to this promise. We are grafted into the promises that are for them. And there's no other way we are really... Continued by the false sense of a relief-oriented church system. Not that the church doesn't exist. It's that it's perceived differently by man um, than by the Holy Spirit. You know. And so I leave you guys with this. Be blessed. Know that it's okay to make and break contact if it's the will of God for your life. And that it's our job to, to check ourselves at the door whether we're allowing God to truly diminish our boundaries uh, in and of ourselves to keep us in place. And, 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 and we have to be spiritually discerning of not becoming too or not becoming externally reactionary to this inside it out. And not allowing further taking on someone else's traumatic experience of their walk as our own. But knowing that we're here to encourage and exhort one another in faith, hope, and love. To, to get out of our own way so that God's will can be done in our lives. And we can overcome this, this, this mystery Babylonian system in God's proper order and timing for our life. And so, that's it. You should look with the the eyes that were gifted to you, the bigger picture, sanctified, consecrated place over that of the, the world, the natural, the physical, the carnal. And so, I leave you guys with that. You guys already know I love you guys. All right, till the next one. Godspeed. Peace.